And tonight we are doing something a little bit different here on the news at nine. We are carving out a section of this show to dedicate entirely to Tejano music that has a special place here in San Antonio mm -hmm. and for one of our very own as well, RJ Marquez. This is a yes. project that you, RJ, decided to take on after right. you noticed that a local radio station switched up their format. Yeah, so um, a little bit of background information first. I grew up in El Paso and often listened to Latin music, but Tejano was not as big there as it was here, obviously. I attended Texas State up the road and was really introduced to the world of Tejano by some of my closest friends who are from San Antonio and other parts of South Texas. I really came to appreciate the music and stories behind it. So you are here to educate all of us. This is uh, gonna be an hopefully. education for me yeah. as well. I did not grow up listening to it. Right. I don't know a lot about the rise and the fall. Yeah, so this was, a, this was an interesting project. So something that I learned real quick, Myra, was that 107.5 FM, this was KXTN, was the Tejano staple. If you wanted to listen to Tejano music in the San Antonio area, that was the spot. And then it was just gone. It was reformatted and I started to wonder, is Tejano music also going away? Do younger generations still listen to Tejano? And will it survive into this future of music apps and streaming services. So I sat down with some experts of the genre and learned a lot about the history and cultural impact of Tejano music. And you are taking us all the way back to the beginning. That's where we gotta start, right? The beginning, yes. Uh, I had the chance to sit down with a man named Ramon Hernandez. He is an archivist and Latin musicologist. He's also written music columns for different publications, including the Express News. He's basically just has a wealth of knowledge and he broke down the history and roots of Tejano music for us. Ramon Hernandez describes Tejano as a big tent genre of music. A genre that can be pigeonholed into one niche, one that's inextricably linked to other styles and sounds created by Mexican Americans. He traces its roots back more than 100 years ago in the 1910s when Mexican Americans were introduced to the accordion. That started when the Germans came to Texas to pick cotton. The Mexican Americans and the Germans were picking cotton. At the end of the day, they would break out the accordions and they would have like a little jam session. And that's what brought all the cotton pickers or sharecroppers and people together in the evening. With the introduction of the accordion came Mexican polkas and ranchera. The addition of an acoustic guitar or violin made it a conjunto. By the 1920s, Mexican American orchestras began popping up all over Texas. Pasé la noche sin dormir. These orchestras were made up of a variety of instruments, guitars, violins, sometimes a banjo, trumpets, saxophones, perhaps a flute. In the late 1920s, microphones marked a change in the music industry in general, allowing singers to perform without straining their voices. Mexican-American conjuntos and orchestras evolved side by side for decades, influenced not only by changes in the types of instruments available to them, but also by pop culture in general. We are influenced by what was playing on American radio or what they saw in the movies. So we kind of emulated what was going there. Music continued to evolve in 1948 when Fender mass-produced the first electric guitar, and in 1951, Fender developed the precision electric bass. All of a sudden, they didn't need the upright bass, the tolo loche, the contrabajo. In 1954, Isidro Lopez records a song that sets Mexican-American music in a new direction. That song was called Díganle. It becomes a hit and is recorded again and again throughout the years. Therefore, he's considered the father of Tejano music. It was around this same time that a lot was going on in the Mexican-American music scene at once. There were Chicano conjuntos, country artists, bebop and doo-wop groups, plus Chicano rock and roll. The mid-60s marked the introduction of the compact Farfisa organ. The use of the organ helped catapult the song Wooly Bully by Sam the Shams to immense popularity. In 1979, the Oberheim synthesizer hit the market, signaling a major turning point in Tejano music. Okay, so we just got a sample of the instruments that make that mm -hmm. unique sound that we all associate with oh, Tejano. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you're also gonna give us a closer look at how a Tejano song is formed. Yeah, so this was a lot of fun right here. There's a lot that goes into creating the Tejano song that get people moving 
all over the place. Uh, this was something we wanted to explore. Producer Lexi Salazar, editor Valerie Gomez, and digital producer Andrew Wilson sat down with Alvaro Del Norte, a local musician who explained what goes into it. They take a deep dive into the anatomy of a Tejano song. Well, to music is based off of conjunto music, you know, and that's how a lot of accordion. And Tejano, uh, you know, they, they really uh, made the sound a lot bigger versus like conjunto music. Uh, they introduced the saxophone, some of them a full band of horns, uh, the keyboard. You'll notice in, in the 80s and 90s at Tejano music, you know, like in Selena music, you'll hear the synthesizers. It's a bigger sound, more complex sound, more mature sound, but always behind it, it's always a very catchy melody. First thing is, you know, in music, there are no rules. There absolutely are no rules. But in Tejano, primarily, you have the drums and the bass. You know, they're providing that rhythm that, that makes you want to dance. If you've ever been down to a fiesta, or, or uh, any other Tejano shows, you're, you're gonna feel that pulse from the kick drum and the bass is boom, 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 boom. I remember growing up, going to, to these events and, and just feeling that vibration like going through me, like wow, you know. <laughs> Keyboards are gonna give you melody or just chords. Sometimes if it's accordion in the band and keyboard, sometimes they go back and forth. But um, yeah, a lot of melody, I, I'd say. But in Tejano, though, you, got, you get introduced uh, the electric guitar. There you get more bluesy, more rock stuff, and their jazzy stuff. Uh, they're doing rhythm, you know, a lot of times, but at the same time, they, they'll come out with a lead here and there. The accordion uh, is, is all melody, primarily. It gives. Tejano, it's very unique flavor. Back in the day, like actually, before Tejano started, the bass was doing its... So, this side was doing all the, the rhythm, and, uh, and this side's doing all the melody. Once they got more members in the band, of course, uh, the accordion just stuck to doing melody. Like in, in, in metal music, it's, it's like the lead guitar, you know? And you can even see people like rocking out, like, you know, to uh, the Hano music, you know, they're doing like the air accordion, you know, they're doing that, you know, just like you would air guitar. That accordion, that's the signature. Yeah, but the I air accordion. That's <laughs> the awesome. air accordion. Yeah. I know, I don't think I've seen that before, but that's what seems to get everybody yeah, going. Yeah, absolutely. I do know this. Tejano mm -hmm. music had its very own golden age, oh, yeah. like a lot of genres, mm -hmm. right? Early 80s, mid 90s, a special time for Tejano music in San Antonio and South Absolutely, Texas. Myra. Yes, anyone who was in San Antonio and lived through this Tejano boom will tell you there was no better time for the music. I spoke to Hector Saldana and Johnny Ramirez about the area about the era, excuse me. Hector is a former Express News music columnist who currently serves as the Texas music curator at the Whitliffe Collections at Texas State. Johnny was a DJ at KXTN. Both said it was a magical time to be a part of the industry. Well, when you think about Tejano, the golden age really was 1985 to 1995. We all know and remember the names. Little Joey La Familia, Grupo Mas, Laura Canales, and La Mafia. These are just a few of the musical acts that were part of the Tejano movement that swept through San Antonio and South Texas in the early 80s. What I remember was just the excitement of this new wave. You know, they would call it La Onda Chicana, the wave, or La Onda Tejana. 
These acts that were part of the Texas wave played to packed dance halls and concert venues. Tejano music blended with other types of music, but there was a key ingredient missing that took it to new heights, the accordion. When the synthesizer hit the market in the late 1970s, it largely replaced the accordion, but two Tejano staples helped bring it back to prominence. The two people who changed this is Roberto Pulido and uh, David Lee Garza. The mastery of David Lee Garza, the way he played, everybody wanted you know, him to back up uh, their, their, their band and recordings. Those acts were also springboards to the next generation of performers that included some of the biggest names in the industry, Emilio Navaira, Jay Perez, Ram Herrera, and Selena Quintanilla. San Antonio was at the epicenter of Tejano music, but it was also being played and listened to across the state. In a sense, San Antonio was like the London of uh, Tejano. You had to go to the big city. That was where you are going to make it. Johnny Ramirez, a longtime DJ and voice at KXTN, describes the era. The 90s was, was the best because we had all this, we had our solid core, but then we had all the bandwagoners. And that's what really blew up Tejano. KXTN. Ramirez said Tejano music at the time transcended race, age, background, and social status. We had Anglo people that would go to our events. We had African-American people. They all came to the party, and the party got really, really big. But at the core of the party was always family. Every weekend, you could hear the music coming from homes, cars on the street, from bazaars, and neighborhood fairs. People that were older and younger related, and often the concerts were more like dances. So it was very uh, communal in that sense. From Selena to Emilio to Jay Perez and David Lee, that era of Tejano music left memories that would last a lifetime. It was a, an exciting time, and it left a lot of people that came to the party as bandwagoners. It left an impression on them that they still listen to this day. I think whether you grew up with it or not, if you live in San Antonio, you have a great memory associated with Tejano music. But you were exploring tonight in this segment about how something changed over the past couple of decades. Yeah, Myra, I mentioned earlier, I really began to notice the change in April when 107.5 FM stopped broadcasting KXTN, but things were actually changing before this year. In fact, back in 2011, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences eliminated 31 categories at the Grammy Awards. One of them was Tejano, so we just wanted to know what happened. Well, the obvious one is the death of Selena, but that's too simple of a uh, transition period. Even she was trying to move into the mainstream market. Saldana says at the time of Selena's death in 1995, she had just about finished her English debut album, and it was also around this time that Emilio Navaira released his first country single. It was always a regional genre that got a big boost because of stars like Emilio and Selena. I think, unfortunately, yeah, it's not, it's not as, uh, as vibrant as it used to be. The problem is radio airplay, the lack of radio airplay. Hernandez says there are still talented Tejano musicians out there, and as a music writer, he gets about 10 CDs a month. A lot of it is superb, and it's, it saddens me, it hurts me that they're not playing it. That's what they need. They need that exposure. Another thing that's impacted the industry, technology. Tejano was slow to get into the game of uh, musical downloads and streaming. Saldana says that the Tejano music industry simultaneously had to deal with decreasing radio support, fewer venues for live shows, and a sluggishness to adapt. Tejanos, to some extent, are, are still kind of uh, old school. Uh, at least the older Tejanos, they still want a CD. They still want something in their hand that they can take back home and play. It had to deal with what happens with any pop music genre, which is that it's dominated by younger artists. And so you had older, more male-dominated acts sort of representing what Tejano was. And it, it probably uh, needed to change in the way that country music changed. Big parties, they, they kind of fade away. Uh, and. The record labels, the majors came in, they made their money, uh, and then they just left. Still, the people we spoke to seem to view what's happened to Tejano music as more of an evolution than an extinction. So Tejano sort of exists now, but it's evolved into more of an international sound, more of a dance-oriented, Miami-centric, New York-centric sound. It's like saying that country music is going to die in Nashville. You know, it's not going to happen. It's still around. You just may not recognize it quite as Tejano, but the roots are still there. 
As you heard, the golden age of Tejano is over, but there is still an effort in South Texas to keep the history alive. A man you've heard from a lot tonight is actually helping out with this. About a year ago, Ramon Hernandez donated one of the largest known collections of Tejano music artifacts to Texas State University's Whitliff Collections. This history needs to be preserved and it needs to be on the same level of Willie Nelson, Jerry Jeff Walker and all the, and all the other artists that most people just think of Texas music. You can see more at the Whitliff Collections on the campus of Texas State University. So where does Tejano music go from here? We've heard a lot about its most popular days to some of the decline, but true to its nature, the music has stood the test of time, going back nearly a century. The roots of Tejano run deep in South Texas. We examine the cultural impact the music has had in San Antonio. In its simplest form, Tejano in Spanish simply means Texan. When you think about the impact of Tejano music, it's a sense of pride for San Antonio residents. Orgullo. I mean, just like goosebumps. <laughs> to me, uh, hearing the music, it brings back a lot of memories. Uh, it's good for our city, the culture, and I think that, you know, uh, we need more people listening to Tejano music. Those songs really are like our songs. They really are our songs. Like, you know, we created them. Tejano music has become a part of family life across South Texas, a familiar constant. It's not just a music genre. It, it's always been a part of our tradition, a part of our culture, and a part of, of who we are as, as a people. It seems like at every big event, every important event at weddings, quinceañeras, funerals even, a, a backyard barbecue, they'll be playing Tejano. Many people believe Tejano music is past its prime, but there are still venues across San Antonio playing live Tejano music to crowds every weekend. One thing that you definitely cannot deny is that Tejano music is part of the culture and the soul of San Antonio. It gets people moving anywhere they go to listen to it or people that get to play to it. It is part of the generational hold on this city. I've grown up with it since, you know, birth, so um, it's just been something I've always enjoyed. You know, it's my culture. There's a lot of school programs that teach accordion, that teach mariachi music, even at the college level. So you do have avenues for young people to get into music, and then if they want to do Tejano, start their own group, they can do it. And there are signs that's exactly what new Tejano artists are doing. An example of this, a group called Signo recently remade the popular song Despacito. Making it their own by infusing old school Tejano with new sounds. They just did it last year. And uh, again, here we have a South American flavor with a Tejano twist. So we have to accept it. We have to go along with the times. Tejano music is never going to die. Uh, will it reach the peaks of the early to mid 90s? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that it will eventually and I hope to still be around for that. With a decline in radio support, many say it's essential for the older generations to pass down the Tejano tradition and tell their children and grandchildren what the music means and represents. As Mexican Americans, uh, Tejanos, whether you're first, second, third, fourth generation, I think it's upon us to instill the music to our youngsters. I think that if they love hip hop, great. Whatever format is out there, rock and roll or independent rock or whatever they want to call it, it's great. I mean, music is, is, was made to be loved. But every so often sit them down and say, this is what we're about. This is our music. You may not hear it on the radio as much, but you mm -hmm. know in San Antonio and South Texas, that is going to stay around. Absolutely, yeah, and that's one of the biggest things that I kind of took from meeting with these individuals and just doing several of these stories is that no matter what, it's just going to be around for years and years to come. I think it is important for us to sort of pass that some of those traditions down because as many people just said, it is San Antonio. That yeah. is our culture and so we need to definitely be proud and representative of it. And I appreciate you educating me as yeah, well as was, a lot of other too. people. For out here tonight well. about the history, the impact, and yeah. its future. Oh yeah, whatever absolutely. that may look like yes. in South yeah. Texas. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun to put together, and uh, we had some uh, great help from the people we interviewed, and also our uh, crew here again. Producer Lexi, Andrew, digital producer, and uh, Valerie put together those pieces. So awesome stuff. And it was just there. fun to listen to. Yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> Thanks, RJ. Yeah. Thank you, Myra. We'll be right back. <laughs> 